hey, in this movie, I'm going to show you some slightly more buried features in Serum, which I've just used to create this pretty cool sounding patch. The first technique I'm going to show you is how to import samples into Serum. This is done using the noise section here. So first I need to turn it on. And now it can be used to layer noise or apply transient boosting to your sound. But it can also be used to replay any samples you import. So I've got this pluck sound in Loop Cloud. So all I have to do is drag that into the noise section onto the display. And then if I turn off the oscillator, turn up the level here, we hear that sample being replayed. Now at the moment, it's not repitching, re so it doesn't matter what note I play. But if I turn on this switch here, then it will sort that out. And also the sample is in C, so I don't need to adjust the semitone value at all, and it'll be in tune. So you can hear if I turn the oscillator on. And finally, I'll also turn on this switch here, which is one shot mode, as if I hold a note down uh, with it off, you can hear the sample loops, and I just want it to play through a single time. The next technique is also importing samples, but this time not to use them with the noise section to replay them as they are, but to create your own custom wavetable, which you can do with either of the oscillators. So going back to Loop Cloud, I've got this different pluck bass sound now. And once again, if I just drop it straight into the display, you can see there are a few import options I'm going to choose the one with zero snap because it should result in the least clicks. And then if I click on the display, you can see there we have our sample represented as a wavetable. And if I click the edit switch in the top corner here, you can go to the wavetable edit area where you can see all of those waveforms making up our sample. And you can also scroll through the whole lot. Now right at the end here, we've got loads of dead space, loads of silence. And I'm only really interested in the very start here where all the uh, cool content is. So I'm going to select this slice, slice five, and then shift click right at the end. So it selects all those slices after. And then I go to the remove menu and go for remove multi selection. And now you can see I've got just the first four waveforms. What I'm going to do at the end here, though, is add an additional one, which I'm going to make a sine wave, which I could do here using the menu. But I think I want the sine wave going the other way so it fits in a little more with this waveform just before. So the way I'm going to do that is just by reducing my grid to two. So we've got four quadrants here now. And then I just need to select the curves like so, so it goes the other way. So now we've got five different waveforms in our wavetable, and you can see them represented now in the oscillator section. When I hold down a note, it selects each of those different waveforms. So now that we've got our five individual waveforms in our custom wavetable, one really cool thing you can do to turn this into something that sounds fantastic is use the morph facility in the wavetable edit. What this will do is it will help transition from one waveform to the next um, by using a load of additional waveforms. So if I go to the edit display here, go to the morph menu, and then choose one of these morph options like crossfade. Now you can see we've got a ton of extra waveforms being created. If I go back to the oscillator display, there they are all nicely blending from one waveform to the next. A much smoother sound to the uh, jerky sound you get when you don't have uh, the morph facility enabled. So now I can take an envelope and use it to modulate the wavetable position dial. create all sorts of really cool sounds. So now we've got this really cool sound created with oscillator A, with our custom wavetable, adding this really nice transient being modulated by 
uh, envelope two here. Ending up with a nice pure tone at the end uh, to keep the sound nice and clean. So the next technique is going to use oscillator B to add a replica of this at a higher pitch, a bit like a harmonic. So if we go to the menu, you can see there's copy oscillator A to B, and you can do it with or without modulation. So if I do it with, now you can see we have two replicas there, and this is also good for applying your own detuning, although the unison voicing kind of takes care of that. So what I'm going to do with this one is pitch it up a fifth, seven semitones. Could even go up another octave. Now you can hear at this much lower level, it just adds a nice bit of extra colour and richness at the top end. Next technique I wanted to show is the multi-mode filters. First of all though, I'm going to add our noise back in. Turn it down a bit. Now to route all three of these to the filter section, I just turn on A, B and N then turn on the filter section. It's a little bit clicky at the moment, so I'm actually just going to increase the attack a tiny bit. And then we can use this same envelope that we're using to modulate the wavetable positions to modulate the filter cutoff as well. Changing this though to a different filter, instead of one of the normal ones, what we're going to do is select one of the multi ones here. For example, we could go for low notch. And that's great because it gives you that low filter top end that we can modulate in the classic way, but it also gives you an additional notch filter in the center, which you can set to a frequency according to what kind of a sound you're trying to make. <clears throat> so in the middle somewhere, if you're making a bass preset, perhaps lower down if you want to go for a lead. But I could also use the envelope to modulate that as well. Maybe in the other direction. So loads of great options there for creating all sorts of different effects. The next technique is in the effects section. Obviously applying effects is a really nice way to solidify, sort of unify all these components together. The main thing I wanted to show here was just the compressor can be switched to multiband mode, which is something that's often overlooked. And this really enhances the sound. I'm pretty sure it's uh, the OTT multiband compressor also made by Transfer. It certainly sounds very similar with very heavy compression and also really bring out the high frequencies. And here it's also bringing out some clicks there. So if I go to envelope one, the amplitude envelope and just increase the release a bit, maybe the attack as well. Seems better. It's obviously quite heavy as it is, but you can use the mix control to blend in an amount of it if you don't want it to be quite so extreme. And the hyper dimension effect could also be quite good. Uh, if not for the unison voicing, then certainly for the small kind of dimensional reverb that it applies. Um, speaking of unison voices, I didn't actually add any in, in uh, the oscillator sections yet. It's always a good sign if you haven't applied any and it sounds great because often I find myself applying them too early and it's an easy way to make a sound really cool. And 
the final things I might just do to the sound now are also use the envelope to modulate the level of our sample, which I think is much uh, tighter sound now. Might also re-pitch it. Or not. And finally, don't forget when you're designing sounds to assign the macros, which is a good thing to do to help you remember what the key parameters of the sound are. In this case, I think it's definitely envelope two, decay, uh, which changes the length of the sweep through the wavetables on both oscillators, uh, the level of the noise, and also the filter sweeps. So we could go to our decay here and drag the first macro to it, set the level however we like, set an appropriate range from the smallest to the largest. And then uh, label it and uh, preset, maybe just length actually. Just to finish this sound off then, I've got uh, a couple more macros assigned now. Uh, macro three is on the hyper dimension effect in the rack here. Just bringing up the mix and size in various amounts. And the middle one is adding some wave shaping via syncing in both oscillators. So if I click on it, you can see I've got just a little bit going on with oscillator A and a bit more going on with oscillator B. Um, the reason being I didn't want to lose too much of this bottom end in the sound, uh, which you get when it goes up too far. So if you want to listen to that. And you can see the frequencies going up on the display as well, which is nice. And of course, these macros are really good fun to play around with. As you can see in these clips where I've applied some automation. First up in the first clip, I've just got the sync amount going up in the last two bars. And then the next one, I've also got the length going up. So if I play those. And now if I add a beat that I've got going on in Loop Cloud here. You can hear it produces a really nice sound. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and learned a few things and check out my Serum Sound Design Masterclass for more tips and to really get to know the instrument. And I'll see you next time.